Hello everyone and welcome to this new video about level design. In this episode, we're going to see how to model a simple stone arch. The model will be fairly low poly, but we'll try and give it some personality by adding some cracks and imperfections here and there. So without further ado, let's jump into Blender and start modeling our arch. Ok, for this object, we can actually use the startup cube as is. This cube will eventually be one of the feet of the arch. To prepare the base shape of the model, I'm going to benefit from the mirror modifier we already talked about in our last modeling episodes about the crate and the barrel. And once again, remember we can easily add a new mirror on an object thanks to the Auto Mirror plugin, that's available in the end panel over here once enabled in your plugin settings. However, by default, this Auto Mirror plugin uses clipping which means that the geometry on the mirror plane is discarded and merged with the mirrored copy. In our case, this would basically cut our cube in two and glue it to the middle of the scene, which is clearly not ideal. To avoid this, we can first go into edit mode and move our cube to the side, away from the mirror plane, and then we can add our mirror modifier and we directly see our mirrored cube appear on the other side of the y-axis. Now, in the front view, let's bring our cube up along the z-axis by one unit. This will ensure that the bottom of our arch is indeed at zero, and that it is not partially buried in the ground. If you're curious about why pivot points are important, don't hesitate to have a look at the last modeling episode I did in the series on the 3D barrel, where I discussed this concept in more details. Anyway here, we've now got two cubes resting on our xy plane, with a mirror modifier to directly copy any changes from the right to the left. So it's now time to bring up these cubes into actual pillars, and then join them in the middle to make our arch shape. To do this, I'm going to select the top face of my cube, and inset it by pressing I. Then I'll use the E key to extrude this new smaller face and drag it up. This instantly creates a new vertical tube of faces, and with the top face still selected, I can then go back in front view and scale it to bring it towards the center. This way, I get the beginning of a curved line for my arch. Now, we of course need to keep extruding our pillar to finish our shape. A nice trick here is, rather than using the E key like before, which extrudes the face forward along its normal, keep my face selected, but do a right click in the viewport, to directly extrude it to the position of my mouse. This makes it really easy to add some geometry and create our arch curve segments. For the middle part this time, we are going to actually take advantage of the mirrors modifiers clipping feature. Basically, I'm just going to move this face towards the middle, and as soon as it touches its mirrored counterpart, vertices will be merged to get just a single set of points at the center. Note however that the inner face is not destroyed, so we should remove it ourselves to avoid having useless extra geometry. Ok, at this point we have a very basic art shape that we can retweak a little if we want to get a smoother curvature. If you feel like having a bit more detail in this curve, you can also use the loop cut tool with Ctrl plus R and add some extra edge loops in the pillar segments to better control the shape of the object. Now, if you were to do a low poly game with clean and minimalistic meshes, this arch model could probably be enough. But here I want to have some fun and improve this object by giving it some extra details. Namely, some bumps on the side and some cracks in the stones. Of course, I don't want these details to be identical on both sides, so before I do anything, I'm going to apply my mirror modifier and thus cut the copy effect. Ok, now to add the extra geometry, there are four techniques we can use. The bevel of either edges or vertices, the addition of loop cuts, followed by some scaling to mark specific edges, the extrude of faces along the normals, and the usage of the knife tool to create some stylized cracks. So let's see how these four techniques can help us give some personality to our arch model. First, for the bevel, you'll want to use Ctrl plus B for the edges and Ctrl plus Shift plus B for the vertices. This tool allows you to add vertices and turn a hard edge or a pointy corner into a plain tilted face. Typically, adding bevels on a few edges and vertices here and there on a model, at random, instantly gives it a more worn-down look, 
as if it was damaged by time. This is quite cool if you want to integrate this arch in an old medieval dungeon or a deep crypt of sorts. Note that you should try your best to add the bevels randomly. Here we're not looking for human-like building with regular patterns, but rather the unexpected quirkiness of age. So feel free to bevel sometimes just one and sometimes multiple components and do it in various places on the model, even on points or edges that are at the bottom, because it will still impact the overall silhouette of the object quite nicely. Ok, then we'll use the second technique and add some extra loop cuts to mark some edges. For this we could obviously reuse the loop cut tool from before with Ctrl plus R, but we can also keep going with our bevel friends. Except this time we'll increase the number of segments to 2. This allows us to keep the initial edge loop in the middle and just pop two new ones on each side. Now we can use Alt plus click to reselect the loop at the center and scale it down to bring it inwards. And you see that this instantly creates a nice dent in the stone, as if those were two blocks cemented together instead of just a single massive one. So by adding some dents of various widths like this, we again make our model slightly more realistic and more appealing to the eye. And then let's do some extruding. The idea here is once again to add extra geometry and detail to convey a more lifelike feeling and avoid the too polished look we still have for now. So just like before, I'll simply select some random groups of faces and then I'll press Alt plus E to extrude them along the normals. You see that this grows out some blocks and it creates more visually interesting ridges and valleys, which is particularly valuable when you have some lighting, because you'll then have all these little spots to highlight with your lights. And finally, let's add a last type of details some manual stylus cracks. In short, the idea is to press K to enable the knife tool and then simply draw some edge patches on the large faces of your model so that you can then select this new face and extrude it inwards along its normal, again with Alt plus E. To be honest, compared to our previous techniques, I think this is a bit more heavy in terms of artistic choice, so you should totally feel free to skip this step if you don't want your model to be that detailed. But anyway, there you go. You've now got a basic example of some blender tools that you can use to model a simple low-poly stone arch with some nice cracks and ridges to give it some extra personality. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial about asset creation and Blender 3D modeling. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And of course, don't hesitate to leave a comment with your own ideas for future level design tutorials. As always, thanks a lot for watching and take care.